right, let's talk about a movie that is very, very highly rated uh, from IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Gene Siskel loved it. Roger Ebert was meh on it. And this is a movie I have never seen before, but it's a movie that's very popular in pop culture. It's been parodied and talked about in other movies and TV shows. So I've heard about it um, and so much that I feel like I've seen the movie, but this was my first time actually watching it. And let's get into it. So Deliverance, 1972. This is a movie about these four guys from the city coming to this backwoods area to, to go canoe down a river that's about to be de destroyed somehow. Uh, there, there's construction nearby. They're going to get rid of the river, I guess. And so they want to canoe down it before it's gone. But then they bump into some of the locals who ass rape one of them, and then they fight back, kill one of them, and then this sets off the rest of the movie. <laughs> and yeah, it's a movie about survival. It's a movie about town folk versus big city folk. And it's a movie about misinformation, you know, with Burt Reynolds' character saying that this person was shot when clearly they were not. And so that sets off another chain of, you know, if he just would have kept his mouth shut, who knows what would have happened? Who knows? Maybe if they just would have went to play golf, none of this would have happened. So I think the message of the movie is quite clear. You should always play golf and never canoe because the outdoors suck. There's just bugs and, you know, people wanting to fuck you in the ass. I mean, there's all kinds of crap out there that you can just easily avoid if you just go play golf. And... So this is from the director of The Exorcist 2. Um, I'm not sure if that really sells the movie because everyone seems to universally hate that movie. But hey, he made one good movie here. Uh, I haven't seen all his other work. but <laughs> So yeah, The Exorcist 2. Interesting. And this is from the writer of Call of the Wild, a book that we were all forced to read in school. So, and the writer of this movie is in the movie also. He's the sheriff at the end. So, getting into what I like about the movie, uh, I really like the cast. You got Burt Reynolds, and you got John Voight. You got uh, Ned Beatty. I think this was one of his first movies as well, I read. And I looked at his filmography. He's done a lot of things since this. So, a lot of big-name actors or people who are going to be big names. You got Ronnie Cox in the film. He would be in a lot of movies later on. Also, he was the bad guy in uh, RoboCop. So a lot of recognizable faces here, and they're all pretty good. I like these characters. They all stand out from each other. You know, one of them's called Chubby, they call him. So, you know, that's what makes him different from the other ones. And you got Burt Reynolds, who's like the Rambo character. He thinks he's badass. He likes to take risks. He doesn't have insurance. There's no risk in that. Um, and then he he's also like the survivalist. He He likes to the forest life. He doesn't like the city life. He wants to, you know, it's his idea to go canoeing because he's the outdoorsman. And then you got John Voight, the pipe smoker who has the family. He's the family man. And then you got the guitar playing guy played by Ronnie. Uh, he's just a guitar guy. He sings and plays guitar. So they have their own little, you know, quirks and little personality traits that make them stand out from each other. And they all have a good camaraderie with one another. I like their chemistry and when they're hanging around the campfire and just their banter. So I really like the characters. And, you know, it's, it's, it's shot well. It has a realistic feel to it. It feels like you're there in the woods with them. They shot this on location in Georgia, I read. And they did their own stunts. There was no stuntmen for them. There was no dummies being thrown down the river. Like, you see these actual actors doing these stunts themselves... And I even read that Burt Reynolds broke his tailbone because of the stunts in this movie. And when you see John Voight climbing that mountain towards the end, that's him climbing it. I'm sure they had some safety harness on him, I hope, because that was a dangerous stunt if he was not hooked up to anything. So I love the realism feel, like even the local people, the people with the bad teeth and <laughs> the people that are like the hillbillies, they hired actual local hillbillies in the area to give it a more authentic you know backwoods feel i also like the banjo score uh, i read that there was some controversy with the score because it was ripped from something in the 50s and that person sued so when you watch the movie 
It doesn't even have a credit for who scored the film because of that. But just using the banjo music, I thought was smart. And I like that they don't linger on the rape. This is before I Spit on Your Grave. This is before the whole rape revenge subgenre. This is right around the time of uh, The Last House on the Left, which was way more brutal. I appreciate that they did not go Last House on the Left and I Spit on Your Grave with the rape scene. It's just close-ups of their faces reacting. There's no... It doesn't get brutal, so I'm glad. They didn't need to linger on that for me to get the message and, you know, to understand what was happening. So, I like that, and it's very well shot, and it has some good cinematography, but there's some bad day-for-night shots when he's climbing that wall. Like, you can just tell the sun's back there, and they do some weird filter. It just was really jarring, so I did not like that. Um, so yeah, that's really all I gotta say about my likes, dislikes. This movie is very leisurely paced. Like it just, there's so many scenes in the movie that feel like they go on for an extra two, three minutes than they needed to. It's just very dialogue heavy in some scenes where I'm like, I get it. Like, are we still talking about this? Like, it feels very much like a book turned into a movie. Like, it's just... They're taken directly from the book and they're not truncating anything. It's just like we're going to have these scenes go on for 10 minutes when they should only last five minutes. Like there's so many shots of them canoeing. Like I feel like half this movie is them canoeing, just shots of them going down the river again and again. It's like I get it. They're canoeing. So I just feel like this movie does not need to be an hour and 50 minutes. You could have trimmed 10 minutes out of this movie at least. And But that's just me. Uh, in the third act, just I lost interest. It just became completely to me tensionless. Like there was no suspense. Like the th second act of the movie is the best part, but when they leave the forest, it just quickly uh, amounts to nothing. After that, like they just w go home. Not much happens. There's no more suspense. There's no more thrills. Nothing. They just kind of talk to the sheriff about what happened. And then they just go home and eat corn, and then movie's over. So, and I mean, you see that one of the characters is suffering from post traumatic stress, and you know, they have nightmares about eventually getting caught about, you know, about what happened and them finding out the truth. Like, but just, I needed a better finale than this. This was just not my cup of tea. And Drew killing himself felt very forced. Like, they try to make it a mystery for a bit. Like, did he kill himself? Or was he shot? Did he accidentally fall out of the canoe? They made, they made it look like he purposely threw himself off the canoe. And it's just very forced so that the plot can work in the second half of the movie. Where, you know, they can have this theme of misinformation causing, you know, bad results. Like, if that didn't happen, John Voight wouldn't have been climbing that mountain looking for a hunter and then bumping into this guy who was just legit out there hunting, not them, just hunting animals, and then shot him. I mean, that's supposed to be just some random hunter, right? That's not the guy who was participating in the rape earlier. That's some other dude. So if Burt Reynolds would have just not lied because he was like, he was shot. There was no gunshots. You, you would hear a gunshot. So it was just very, very forced to me just to get the plot in where they wanted it and shit. I just did not like that. And so, yeah, that's really all I got to say. It's just the pacing. It's not my kind of movie. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of horror in it. It's just like in the middle where there's the most tension and uh, horror in it because of the rape. And then John Voight climbing that wall and looking for the the potential assassin on top. And that was the best part of the movie. But... The first act could have been trimmed some. The third act could have been way better to me. It just kind of lost steam. So, final thoughts. It's a well-made movie. It has a terrific cast. Some really good performances. Uh, but it's just, like I said, it's not my cup of tea. It's not something that I see myself ever revisiting again. So, when it comes to Deliverance, if you've never seen this movie before, I recommend maybe just streaming it, borrowing it from a friend, or renting it at Redbox. So those are my thoughts on Deliverance. I'm not going to do a spoiler discussion. There's not much to spoil that I didn't already spoil in my non-spoiler dis you know, discussion. A guy gets raped, and then they fight back, kill a dude, 
and then they escape and call the cops and tell them a bullshit story and then go home eat corn the end so that's the end of the movie what are your thoughts did he kill himself or did he get shot they looked for a bullet hole there was no bullet hole he did not get shot he killed himself because i guess he didn't want to live with the guilt even though he wasn't even the one who shot the guy with the arrow that was burt reynolds uh i don't know like and did burt reynolds lose his leg they never really you know, finalize that. They say he might lose his leg, but did he lose his leg? And that effect on his leg, just to nitpick that, that did not look good. And there were some inconsistencies there too. Um, so yeah. Anyways, yeah, what, what do you think? Fan theories, what happened? Did he kill himself, Drew? Or did he get shot? That guy that John Voigt shot with the arrow? Did he? Was he the guy from earlier or was that a different dude? I'm pretty sure that was a different dude. So he shot and killed some innocent guy because of misinformation from Burt Reynolds convincing him that there was a shooter but there wasn't so this has the message that Halloween Kills has but it's not so fucking heavy handed but anyways yeah let me know what you think about this movie in the comments below do you think it's a masterpiece or do you think it's overrated underrated let me know and as always if you like what you've seen here you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking the my cartoon face in about five seconds and remember it's all an opinion you don't need to get butt hurt about it